thank you all and welcome to my session um, this is an introductory session on copilot so how anyone has used copilot before yeah so you have used in like uh, microsoft fabric or dynamic 365 or it's they have various different versions so i'm going to talk a little bit about uh, GitHub uh, Copilot, but it's same idea apply in even you use in browser Copilot application as well. Um, so this is me. I'm Alpa Budbati and I'm working as Azure Data Consultant. You can find me in LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, which is now X, in GitHub, uh, in Medium and YouTube as well. If you have any question, you can contact me later on via LinkedIn as well. So co-pilot, so these are the today's agenda. So we're going to see quick overview of general overview of co-pilot and then we will see some demo using the VS code, which is Visual Studio uh, code or maybe you can use Visual Studio. So what is uh, GitHub co-pilot? So it's similar to other co-pilots which you have used in maybe Microsoft Fabric, or maybe in browser, or in Office, or Word, or maybe now you can see yesterday's note that it can be available in SQL as well, Azure SQL Database. So these are the same con similar concept in all place. So it is a powerful tool. It uses AI. It uses uh, LLM like uh, GPT or like that. That kind of the model behind the scene, and it's trained on huge amount of data. So for example, in a GitHub Copilot, which is specifically for code train on a public GitHub repository, millions of millions public Git repository, it's trained and based on that, it gave you some suggestion. So it use a machine learning model behind the scene. And as we said earlier, it use a natural language processing as well. So if you write down a English sentence, it give you the answer in maybe code. For example, you ask that, uh, this is my business requirement where I have a complex calculation and I would like to check GB2 to generate a sample data for me. So it will generate some tables, like five rows. We can give, even specify as well how many rows we need. Then we can ask it to write down a pseudo code. So it can write down a code for you in SQL language, Python language, or any language. And you also ask that implement this functionality. So it will implement a functionality which you have in your project. So if you have a business recommend document, you will copy and you can ask. Sometimes you need to give a little, little portion one by one. And it will also, you know, it give you a proper reason as well why it's calculated this on your sample data. So you can, it help you like that way. So it make your application more smarter and faster as well. And our life make will be easy because we have a less headache. But however, it generates a code and we need to visit them. We need to make sure it is the correct one. But it do a hard work for us so we can do uh, some smart works and save our time and it increase our productivity. So this is a quick overview of the GitHub Copilot. And this applies in same with other Copilots. For example, Fabric Copilot, it's trained on those domains. So it's always helpful if you use for Visual Studio or uh, Data Studio or uh, those kind of the project you use the GitHub Copilot and maybe in Fabric you will use Fabric Copilot and in Dynamic 365 or Office or Word you can use a separate uh, their own Copilots. So based on that you have some price like you have to pay per month. You can I think it's around ten pounds generally to use a particular one, not in Fabric one, but in Office or Word or uh, in um, Visual Studio one. So GitHub charge around 10 pounds per month. Uh, and if you are student, then you have some discount. And if you have a business user, then it charge differently. So I think some of them we already spoken about benefit we earlier seen. So like it's generate a auto automation code based on a content. So you have a specific domain. For example, your project is uh, uh, highway maintenance, or maybe it's something like uh, uh, transportation related, or maybe building maintenance or property management like that. So it has that domain knowledge as well. And based on that, it helps you to create a tables. It gives you some idea and suggest you as well. 
so that is one thing and uh, yeah it's generated comments and based on that it generate code as well and it help you to generate comment as well so based on that you can it can generate uh, com, uh, like code it do this repetitively as well uh, you can ask alter option as well like sometimes it's generate a code and you like in differently because if you give accurate prompt then it will generate accurate but if you give generic prompt then it will generate generic one then you can alter or you can ask uh, more specific for example you said add two number but then you will say two number uh, like you know the range or something then you can say your number can be decimal or like that also that also you can say and you will see how written you need you the rounded written you need or you need whatever is come so you can if you give more specific information then you will get exit output but however it's not always exit output because it's sometimes it's do different things as well but specifically for remote maths related things it always give you right correct answer but something like writing a code for me in this then it's every time you ask sometimes it will generate little bit different answer so yeah uh, you can also ask for writing a unit testing so based on your business requirement uh, you can give that prompt and it will generate a test for you and then you can use maybe in your c sharp project or python projects or like that it support a more than one language and uh, you can this i github you need a github account for that and it's versatile you can use same in a uh, visual studio visual studio code and uh, azure data studio and many other tool like that and as we know now that it always help us to enhance our productivity and we can deliver things very faster so we become more confident so yeah we will see a demo but before going to demo i would like to share a few links and things otherwise it will forget so these are the few links the first link is useful if you want to learn for example i think i have open here so this is a uh, uh, okay it's not uh, one minute i'm sharing my screen but it's not coming so so these are the ones so if you go to that link you have this challenge and it's very good if you want to start using this in your uh, environment for visual studio or visual studio code as well and same step you need to follow for uh, azure data explorer if you are a uh, data db or like that um, that's thing and uh, let's go back here okay so those are the things so now let's see a demo but before we starting demo if you are new to this then first of all you need to go to uh, you need to go to particular id which you use for example this is um, visual studio i haven't done in uh, visual studio code because at the moment i have a issue regarding firewall but it's same thing applying there as well or if you have data studio then this is a data studio um, azure data explorer so here you need to first of all in uh, you need to install a uh, extension so for example you need to type github copilot so it will appears there and then you need to install so i have recently installed but you can install there so here you can connect your azure sql database and you can use uh, this by a copilot which help you to improve productivity and create a complex query and like that create a store procedure for you create a test case for you so you can use that in here and for visual studio uh, this is a visual studio the same we apply in here as well you need to go to extension and you can manage your extension and then you need to search here if you not have then you can say So yeah, I, the, I have already installed, but you have an option here. Uh, yeah, so 
if you want to try free then this is the trial version so you have a 30 days to try free before you buy a license so it's free for you to try for 30 days so you can do that so here you need to install so for installation you need to download first and then you need to close your visual studio and then it will install and it asks you to ask permission so you need to click one button and after that it will install and then you can start your visual studio so uh, after that you can see here so i think i have one slide for that uh, so this is the one so first time when you install it appears in the first box that to enable a github add a github account so you need to log in with your github account and after login you check then you will see second screen which i think i have as well so here you can see that uh, so yeah here you will see so i th if i go to my screen then uh, so yeah so after that it will appear that yellow line in there that you have enabled the github uh, copilot so this copilot you can enable to whole solution or any project in visual studio or you can have a particular project as well or particular solution as well so you can enable or disable based on that and after installation you will see uh, you will see this small icon in there in that corner that is a github copilot it's same icon you will see in visual studio code and you can see even data uh, Explorer is your Azure Data Explorer as well. So you will get idea that is already installed and you can enable or disable by click there and you can do a few more things as well. So yeah, here are a few options. So at the moment is enabled globally, but you can um, like, you know, enable or disable based on your requirements. So that's it. So after this, now let's see a demo. So here you have a few more options. So you can have uh, once you open your Visual Studio or Visual Studio code and you can open your file as well. So for example, this is the file and here you can do things. You can here by this button, this way you can write your uh, comments. You can say create two variables for me or do some calculation for me. Those kind of thing you will do and then you will double tap and it will do it for you. So this is the one way and we are going to see another way which is here which is if you go to in view you have a github copilot chat so we are going through this today so now we can ask here so here are a few more things you have a slash as well uh, to specify prompt and you have a this has sign so if you if you have a big project and you say comparing these two file or give me something based on these two file or like that or as long many files, then you can use has, then it will suggest like you can see here. So it's all file I have it, my solution is appears here. So I can select and I can say, describe what's written in uh, this file. So it will describe for you. So like for example, So it is thinking and it's using machine learning model, it's open AI, basically it's a chat GPT kind of model. You, I think most of us have used a chat GPT. So it's similar thing, so it's doing that, but it's, so it's, give, it's explaining each and every steps what I written in that file, and it's correct as well. So same way you don't know like some calculation in your file, then you just say describe this file, it will describe for you. And you also can say optimize this file, it will optimize for you as well. So here you can do that command. So one which is describe you have one you can do optimize as well actually i haven't given specified any file name but you need to specify you have a his sign and then you will specify then it will uh, optimize and it gives some suggestion so that is the things and now let's create a uh, azure function for it so here let's so you can clean this thread as well by just here now let's add um, here so let's say create an Azure function for uh, print hello. I just type very simple thing, but you can type complex thing as well. You will see later on. So it will create a function for me. 
and it, it is Azure function, so it will create a new file if I insert into my code. It will create a new file and it gives a suitable name based on my question. So I ask a simple question. Based on that, it will create a file name as well. It decide a file name as well. So you can see preview as well by seeing here. This is first time, so there is a no history, but you will see preview as well. And you OK, then you can insert. So this has the code. So this is a function, and you can see it gave a function one uh, at the moment. So let's say save. So once I click on save, you will see it here in solution. This is the one. This file has recently added. And I can run this file as well. So this is Azure function. I think you have already used earlier, then you know how to test it, but I can uh, show you here. So basically it's taking time, but it will generate a URL and that URL you can use it here. And then you send, then you will see it's running correctly. You even can use that URL in browser as well. Um, so that is a while is taking time because we have less time, so I'm doing something else. So here I can say, uh, I think I have a note as well. So for example, in Azure Data Factory or uh, any uh, fabric pipeline or like Synapse pipeline, you know metadata driven table. So if you ask, let's do in, uh, I think in, uh, data project. So for that, you need to create a data project. So this is a SSDT project. So here I can ask, even I can ask a question there as well, but here is more specific. So I'm asking that, can you create a config table? I'm giving very generic information, which is metadata driven uh, pipeline for Azure Data Factory or like that. So based on knowledge it has from internet, it will create a table for me. And then I can modify or I can add more objects as well. Or I can say that can you add more parameters as well. All pos probability parameter add, then it will add more parameters as well. So it's generating query while that, let's see uh, what happened here. I think I will do it one more time. Yeah, so this way you can call your Azure function. So this is a function I'm copying and you can run in a Postman or browser or anywhere. Okay, we have, and it will generate a result as well. Uh, so you can see, uh, you can also ask here that can you create a function, uh, Azure blob trigger when file come into blob storage. Can you, and resize my uh, image on that, then also it will do. I think we don't have a time much, so yeah. So you can do that as well, and uh, even in database side also, you can ask a more complex question, like creating a store procedure, and you just give a set of rule. So I think with that, I would like to thank you for attending this session. Thank you. Yeah.